Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Uh, today in this video, we're gonna try to do a short but uh, hopefully insightful video about the differences between three grammar patterns and those three are the te form of a verb, that's the key kind of pattern here, they're all gonna be te form verbs. So te form of a verb plus iru, te form of a verb plus aru, and te form of the verb plus oku. So these things have things in common basically. They all use the te form of a verb and then you use some kind of like, uh, you might call it a helping verb. And their meanings and functions are kind of similar too, but they have some nuances that make them different. So we're gonna try to go into that uh, so you don't confuse them when you hear them basically. So uh, we'll start with the simplest one. That's the te form of a verb plus iru. Um, Actually, it might not be the simplest, but it's the most common grammar pattern of the three that you'll probably encounter. This grammar pattern, uh, we've covered this one before, we've covered all three of them actually, but uh, we're specializing on the differences today. So this one has basically uh, essentially two different functions. The first one is ongoing action. So when we say te form of verb plus iru, it's like saying am doing that verb. Like it's, we're still doing that verb. It's an ongoing action, continuous action. So like I am running right now or I'm working on my homework. That's the one that isn't important right now because that's not the one that's similar to the other grammar patterns uh, we're talking about here. It's its second function that uh, is similar, it, which is the expression of a result. So when you use have form verb plus iru with certain verbs, um, it conveys this resultant uh, state as opposed to an ongoing action. And if you are curious like, oh, well, how do I know which verbs I use do which one? Well, that's kind of a thing that you just have to commit to memory as you encounter them along the way. But yeah, so when we do the resultant state, basically what we're saying is that the action was performed. So what if we say, shindeiru? This is shinu, the verb to die. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that was funny. Um, so, plus iru, and so it's basically saying that the action of shinu, to die, happened. It was performed, died, and now there's a resultant state. And of course that state is, you know, the person who died is dead and he's a corpse now. And so that's the resultant state of the action. Another example, if we said um, the verbal noun kekkon suru, which means to marry basically, if we say kekkon shiteru, um, this isn't going to mean am getting married as in like I'm currently in the process of getting married It's an ongoing action here. It actually means that the action of marrying happened already married And now there's a resultant state which is of course the person is um, a husband or a wife That's the state they're in now. So yeah, te form verb plus iru resultant state action happened already and now there's a resultant state Let's compare this to number two grammar pattern Te form of verb plus aru. Here we are going to basically say the same thing. A verb happened already, it was performed in the past, it resulted in an object being in a state, a resultant state, and the state still applies to it even now. It kept being in that state until now. When I'm saying the grammar pattern, the sentence, I'm uttering it and it's relevant to now. However, there are other nuances to it. Uh, one of them being that there is an expression of intention with this grammar pattern. So when you say this grammar pattern, um, you're saying that someone intended to do the action. So if we compare that to the examples we did for the te form plus iru with the one with dying and marrying, well the marrying one can be an intentional thing, but the dying probably isn't, wasn't intentional. So it won't apply to te form plus aru. Additionally, te form aru can only be used with transitive verbs. So shinu is again taken out. It can't be used with this grammar pattern because shinu is an intransitive verb. If to die is you're doing you're just doing it to, you're doing it yourself you're not doing it onto another thing the action the kekon example probably is null now too because to marry can be a transitive verb but if we use the transitive version with that example sentence it won't be the same sentence so you can say you marry someone but the meaning changes. So with this grammar pattern right here, te form plus aru, we're focusing on transitive verbs as well as the object that the verb was performed upon, unlike um, the te form plus iru, where the verb action is being used with a subject. So if we really wanted to use the verb kekon suru, which means to marry, with te form verb plus aru, we could turn into some really strange example sense like, to marry someone as in like, maybe I'm a priest and I'm marrying other people to each other and we use like kekon shite aru, 
That would mean like I married these two people together. They're the direct object because they're receiving the action of the verb. And since they're the object, they're actually the focus of the sentence now because we're using this grammar pattern. It focuses on the object more so than the performer of the action. So something like futari ga kekon shite aru is going to be like I married these two people and it resulted in the state of them being married and that state continued on to now when I'm saying this and they're still married. The state is still ongoing and also that state has to be um, kind of like beneficial in a way because this grammar pattern expresses intention to do something ahead of time. So I married them before saying this for some reason that was good um, to be done ahead of time. So I don't know if you can imagine some convoluted context for someone saying that maybe like their parents were in disagreement and they were like trying to stop them from getting married so we had to do it right away and we did it so now they're still married but if we had done it too late then they never would have been married or something like that, I don't know. And now let's compare to the last of the three grammar patterns. The te form of a verb plus oku to mean basically to do something um, ahead of time as well but in preparation for basically like the future. And I do not want to do another convoluted twisting of that marriage example or the dying one, so let's just start off fresh with a brand new type of example. Let's say something like Mado o akete okimasu. And this will translate to basically to open the window and leave it open for the future. Or perhaps more naturally just like to open the window ahead of time or to place the window in an open state or to open the window in advance or something, I don't know. So of course Mado here is the word that means window. We have the direct object marker O there. Uh, we have the verb akeru, which is the transitive verb that means to open, basically. Uh, then we have okimas. The intransitive version of it is aku, and we'll see that being used when we switch to the other grammar pattern. But for now, it's not relevant. The key idea here is that we're doing that action, and it's going to be intentional and preparatory, but it's not going to help us yet in the present when I'm saying the sentence. So it's going to help us in the future, but that hasn't happened yet. So for example, maybe um, I lost my key to my house. I won't be able to get into the house when I come home later, so I'm gonna leave the window open so I can sneak into my own house. And it will help me when that happens when I get home later, but it's not relevant now. And so that's the distinction between doing te oku as opposed to our second grammar pattern, te aru. Te aru, of course, will show still the intention and the preparation, but when we do it with te aru, the line for that will be like, mado ga akete arimasu, and of course we're changing the o to ga, we're still using an intransitive verb, so we, yeah, we don't have to change it because it's already an intransitive verb, um, and yeah. But what that will express is that it's relevant to the now, the action being done in preparation or with intention beforehand is relevant to now. Um, but yeah, it doesn't so much express the uh, emphasis on the future like Oku does. And of course, if we convert the sentence into the first grammar pattern, te form plus iru, it's going to, it's going to turn into mado ga aite imasu. We've got to use an intransitive verb there um, because the window, the mado, is no longer the direct object, it's the subject, so it's got to describe its own state with an intransitive verb as opposed to a transitive verb. And in regard to its differences, I don't think we really have to explain it because we already did. Um, this doesn't give an idea of intention or preparation, it's just kind of bluntly describing the state of it, like uh, from a matter-of-fact point of view. It's open, the window is open. And so, yeah, um, with that example sense, the one with the window that actually could be traced along those three grammar patterns um, way better than the marriage and the dying one, um, hopefully you can see how these grammar patterns differ, um, what cases you would use one over the other two, um, etc. And of course, um, as we said at the beginning of this video, we have already done video lessons on all three of the grammar patterns that we're talking about here. So if you haven't seen those yet, um, it's kind of too late to say, but you definitely should have watched those as prerequisites before jumping into this one. But if you need a refresher on them, then go check them out. And with that, I do no longer have anything to say. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed your time doing so. If you'd like to express that, you can like the video, leave a comment below, or subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to support more of these video lessons, please do consider checking out our Patreon page. Also included on the screen right now are of course a bunch of links on where to find and follow us elsewhere online. Lastly, check out our Discord server. We've got a community of hundreds of so 
if you're looking for somebody to voice chat with just to practice speaking Japanese or if you just want to talk about uh, anime or music or manga. And with that, see you next time. <laughs>